Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video, and today I've got a really awesome game to share with you all. This game, these type of games don't come along too often. I did play against Phoenix, and the map is a map that you haven't seen all that much either. I did play a game versus space on this map, was casted by Cyber, and it was a pretty good one. I was Zokom, I believe. He was still Talons. Pretty underplayed map. Anyway, this game is going to be a really fun one. So I'm going to be marked of Kane. My opponent will be Steel Talons. And this was actually the final game that I played Phoenix on the night. Uh, it was a blast. Now a quick rundown over this map. There is uh, one spike per player and in the top left hand corner there is a contested type room spike. I didn't want to take it. Marked of Kane generally not that great at contesting tip spikes. They're pretty vulnerable to buzzers, and since most players pick random, there is a you know a chance of being overwhelmed by buzzers. But they do deal with squads such as riflemen uh, rather effectively. Their range is very good. Very obnoxious units in the early game. These awakened squads. You can make a couple of them and send them to your opponent's base at, in the beginning, and just delay his harvesting. You can EMP the harvesters. EMP the refinery when the harvest is docking, but make sure you EMP at the back of the ref so you don't target the harvester in it because then the harvester will continue harvesting. Whereas if you target at the refinery just, the harvester would be forced to evac and exit the refinery and would have to go back into it to, to dock again. Very pretty map this. I'm just doing a bit of micro here. This is uh, the beginning of this match and I, I still see you guys that you're, you are really enjoying this format. Last game that I posted on Tiber and Riff received a lot of positive feedback. And I've got more videos like this to come. Now, this game, I'm just going to go for an expansion, but that's not going to be for long. The opening stages of Kane Giraffe when it comes to just ecoing up is very lengthy. Uh, the harvesters and refineries in 1.02 were made $3,000 for the refinery, $1,600 for the harvester. So it's a little slow paced early on. They did this to make it easier to counter rushes, but the exact opposite transpired. In fact, it's more cutthroat than ever having expensive refineries because if you lose one to like a flame tank rush, that's pretty game ending in the start. Keeping an eye on what he's doing. He's not going for an Orca all-in strat or any sort of early game shenanigans that Titan, that uh, Seal Talons would do. Titan MRT comes to mind. Uh, rig rushing as well, but there is a, a, a hill, uh, there's uneven terrain, so it is difficult for rig rushers to work because they have to deploy. Wolverine there, probably to counter my Awakened. I would have made a MRT with a rifle instead, just because that has more mid to late game utility. You can use that to heal your titans up or whatever. Just going to distract him by attacking that tie room spike, and I'm taking up to tier 3 guys. This game's already starting off really weird because I'm not going for an expansion. Instead, I'm taking two tier three on one base, getting that typical upgrade on my tier three, and I'm building stealth tanks. I see a Titan coming out of his war factory. I'm just using this buggy to recon his base. I see a second war factory there, so I was like, oh damn, he's got me figured out here. Because he can go two war factory pivots and shut these stealth tanks down pretty well. Uh, I was a bit confused at this point because I was going stealth tanks, not exactly sure what I'm going to do in this position because I haven't been in this spot before. So I decided to build a barracks and Marked of Kane, aside from their stealth capabilities, they do have some of the best infantry in the game with the enlightened squads, the Tiberium troopers and the commando even as well, which were buffed in R19. Commandos have more armor now. They're a little bit more durable than they used to be. And my answer to all these titans that I'm seeing in the middle of the map is not going to be what you think. I'm building a commando which, you know, in regular games you would build to destroy structures of your opponent and seeing it on one base before an expansion is even more rare. My opponent has a second of fire down on his expo so I'm really behind as far as eco is concerned. I'm just hoping to support these stealth tanks as much as I can, but he still doesn't know I feel exactly what I'm up to. He see, I believe he caught wind of the stealth tanks before, probably has a tier 2 by now to radar scan my base and reveal what's going on. He can't take blue Tiberium, 
but I'm going to try and distract him with the stealth attacks by attacking Harvester on his expansion field while I evac my commando. And I'm going to send this commando in to start C4ing these Titans. Now, Titans are considered walkers. So those are easy prey for commandos. This is just a regular commando. It's not Black Camber. It starts off as a heroic one. No, this is just a marked up Ken commando. But it is really good because you can stealth your Reckoner. And even though these don't start off with veterans, see, having them stealthed inside of a transport is worth the compromise. Commando there doing work. I've got the commando on the map. I know there's a risk of being attacked by a hammerhead. So I'm going to make use of this commando before he gets the chance to build that. Let's see if I can try and bomb this refinery. A bunch of pitbulls coming into my base to do some counterattack damage. Uh, does use the sonic repulsion field. Hammerhead comes out as well. I bomb the C4. I, I bomb the Wolverine. Because those are also classified as walkers. Reckoner there. I'm not going to deploy that, but if he shot at it, that would be helpful. Because I'm losing harvesters, and I really don't have a lot of them. So every harvester loss here is pretty impactful for me. I did lose two. I'm building a second refinery for my expansion. I cleaned that attack up, but yeah, he got some nice damage dealt there. More than my commando achieved in his base. He's got basically infinite eco. I'm on tier 3, however, whereas he isn't. Lots of hammer hits there I see for him, orcas as well. I'm going to deploy this Reckoner in the blue tip field so I can just use it to garrison my Enlightened, which have supercharged particle beams. That provides a significant DPS boost to the cyborg units. Two stealth tanks there just to support my Enlightened by killing these hammer hits. Hammer hits not nearly as oppressive as they once used to be because they did receive a 5% range nerf. Green Zero hasn't been seen in a while since R19. In fact, could it have been the could it have been the five percent range buff, range nerf to the to the hammer hit? Who knows? But I clean that force up nicely. Lots of blue type room there for me to potentially take, but uh, it's kind of contested still. Don't want to take any chances. He is of course well ahead of me as far as macro is concerned, so he can probably rebuild his army much larger than mine. I need to be very cost effective with my units. I've got these enlightened out. Uh, so far this game has been very unorthodox to say the least. I'm building Venoms now just because I, I feel like I need more of a quicker response to Hammerheads. Because he's still building Hammerheads. He's got AP ammo now online. So these enlightened are not going to be as effective as they, used, as they were moments before. Stealth tank now. Unfortunately this was a bit annoying. It was a veteran stealth tank but it reverse me bugged into his army there. That was a pretty costly bug that just occurred. I was told if you reverse move directly behind a unit, there is less chance of the reverse move bug happening. But uh, in the thick of things, it is hard to do that all the time. Uh, I have yet to test that myself, but Drive claims that it re um, reduces the chance of your unit being uh, bugged like that. Stealth tank there, I felt like it wouldn't achieve very much because he knows those stealth tanks out. He's planting sensor pods with orcas all over the place. So instead of using the $3,000 cloaking support power, it's a bit cheaper equipping a stealth tank to this avatar. That's $1,800. I know it feels bad losing a typical stealth tank. But uh, I've got these venoms here, which are going to be all I need to kill hammerheads and orcas. So I'm moving into these orcas and hammerheads, trying to kill as many of them as I can. Uh, he's maneuvering around just in case I lose them. This avatar is going to be overwhelmed, but I've got enlightened squads, which I'm queuing to this avatar, hoping to land a, a nice EMP on in this choke point so I can focus them down with the avatar. But something I did not expect was the shockwave artillery. Phoenix dropping down the shockwave, going to kill the enlightened squad and EMP that avatar. So he actually won that engagement in the end a couple of pitbulls left for him so yeah I lost my whole army there the two stealth tanks in the back are basically all I have left I'm queuing vertigos from my air tower but that's not what I need in this engagement I've got three of them out here I'm gonna might as well bomb a titan pitbulls wolverines pushing into my base I've got two stealth tanks each one of these units if I lose is a huge deal for me because I don't have very much again to replace them microing my stealth tanks I fence the war factory because I need this repair and I can't afford to lose it. And the two stealth tanks still are alive. I did just lose one second stealth tank almost about to be destroyed. But it does regain its stealth 
Uh, stealth tanks lose their stealth capability if they are really damaged. So when they fall below 33% health, they can no longer be stealthed. They need to be repaired back up. Phoenix sending in the Orcus, but I have the Vertigos in pursuit. Vertigos, if you didn't know, have a tail gun on them, which allows them to target aircraft, and they don't need to return to base while using this weapon. All of the Orcas go down to the Vertigo Bombers, and instead of rebuilding my air tower, I planted down a combat support airfield. I don't know what the Nod one's called, I completely forgot, but it does the same thing. It can't produce aircraft, but it can repair and rearm for aircraft such as Vertigo Bombers. I bombed the tier 4, that's a $3,000 structure. But he's going to catch some of them on the retreat, so that's unfortunate. The Pipples will kill one of the Vertigo Bombers. I start planting down... Uh, he starts planting down uh, sensor pods. Phoenix is a big fan of those. If you didn't know, you can put sensor pods on top of structures in Tiberium. And unless the structure is destroyed or the Tiberium is harvested, those pods will not be removed. Avatar there with the dual beam should be enough to deal with these pipples. Lots of pipples out, which is understandable. I went for stealth tanks. I went for vertigo bombers. Phoenix not making any mistakes here. Uh, I am trading very cost ineffectively. I do still have a couple of enlightened left. A Tiberium Trooper as well, just for some anti-infantry, because I, you never know. Even though he's still talents, he can still mix in a couple rocket squads, and that's annoying. But at this point, I probably just need to focus on anti-air Venom specifically. Mammoth Tank's out for Phoenix, so he's finally teched up to Tier 3 uh, after the Orca titan Pipple combo, which is really a powerful combination against Stealth Tanks. You don't want to be building Mammoth Tanks in mass against Stealth Tanks, because you will be vulnerable. Still, Talons don't have Zone Troopers, which would have been GDI's answer to Stealth Tanks, so they have to rely on Orcas uh, and Pipples to counter them. Orcas are great because you can just drop sensor pods like he did there and reveal the stealth tanks way before they're in the base. Here I'm not sure if he has this area revealed. There's a mammoth tank there so I can presume that he put a sensor pod down. I catch a harvester, going to destroy that one. And I'm being very cautious with this stealth tank, I can't afford to lose it. It had just received a rank. Uh, heroic stealth tanks are game ending units. Uh, really it's amazing what you can do with a heroic stealth tank. but. That's basically one of my objectives here, is to try and rank this stealth tank up. I catch a mammoth tank, two enlightened squads, and a stealth tank. Should be able to nail that one. Uh, I'm looking to get the final shot with my stealth tank. But I move away. And I set my sights on that harvester there, which I see went away from the blue type room field. So Phoenix is microing that one away. The uh, Redeemer is just on the left side of my base, because I felt like he had a bunch of pitbulls approaching my base from that direction. A lot of people here with mortars now. Enlightened, traditionally good against infantry. Uh, now suddenly are going to find themselves outnumbered and outgunned because they don't. Because the peoples have mortars, and mortars are really good against infantry. They inflict grenade type damage. I'm trying to harvest this blue tip, but yeah, he's taken the tip in the bottom right corner. I know he's got a refinery down there, so I didn't even bother to look for a tip. The, the blue tip in the middle, though, is something that I can potentially pick up. It somehow detects that stealth tank. I pull that back to base for repair. I try and claim some blue tip while I can, because I'm getting really low on Tiberium. This Redeemer making its way to the top of the map. I sell this combat support airfield because I just don't have any Vertigos left over. The one air tower that I have is enough for repairs. Commando back out for me, because I'm looking to do the same as I did before. With the... A commando, maybe C4, a couple Titans, or Behemoths, that would be the goal. I'm making a Reckoner just to do that. And if you didn't know, guys, in R19, the Vertigo Disruption Pod doubles the duration of stealth. So it, if you put a Disruption Pod down, it now lasts four minutes, as opposed to two minutes in previous patches. Redeemer getting EMP'd by the Shockwave Artillery. Behemoth coming in to destroy that Redeemer, but the Stealth Tank has found it. He's going to get some nice rear damage on this um, Juggernaut. Behemoth will be destroyed. Pitbull's in pursuit of the Stealth Tank. The Redeemer lives. I've got the two Avatars as well. 
I need to destroy this top expansion because I'm really base contained otherwise. I need to take out this base because he's got a lot of eco over me. Probably has the top left spike as well, fueling his economy. Stealth tanks. I, at this point, was a bit confused as to what to do because... You know, the way this game started and the way it is now, who who can blame me? It is pretty wild. I've got a commando though. Those are going to be really good against infantry. Lots of rifles there and grenadiers that I can use, uh, that I can kill with this commando. Maybe I can use this stealth tank to scout ahead, but it's an expensive scout. I'd be better sending in a Venom. But I feel like after destroying that base, after destroying his units i have a good time to go on the counter attack and attack his main base i don't have any resources nor does he have any but he has more than me potentially because of that refinery in the bottom right now there is an mp control center in the bottom right he probably has that as well firehawks coming in uh, not sure what they were looking for maybe built them in anticipation of more vertigos but those didn't accomplish very much in the end. Could have gone into my base actually and killed some of my uh, structures. Laser fence is not nearly as good as they once were at defending against Firehawks. But this is going to be a big engagement. I did launch the Rage Generator, but I didn't realize just how many units he had. I was expecting there to be way less resistance than he actually did have here. I see a bunch of Orcas on the deck getting rearmed. Stealth Tank focusing down one of those Orcas. The uh, avatars are trying to deal with this force. There's behemoths out for him though. I killed the last of the orcas, but the heroic stealth tank, which just did live for one second, goes down. That's unfortunate. Those are usually units that win you the game, but because it was so low health, it just died the moment it promoted. And this redeemer is now stranded on its own. The two avatars were destroyed, and suddenly this has just gone from bad to worse. I just don't have any anti. Uh, air. Uh, I was really petrified that the hammerheads would go on the counter-attack and attack my enlightened because I don't have any anti-air units and Phoenix doesn't know this. He could have gone in and destroyed all of those enlightened. I just don't have any AA. Yeah, I've got one bike here but that's not nearly enough. I need way more than that. Okay the second bike comes out so there's a chance now. The redeemer just goes down. I tried to milk that for as much as I could. But uh, that's going to put me in a very precarious position now. I lost my Redeemer. I lost the two Avatars. And now I've got these Poultry Forces. There's nothing there that can really tank damage. He's still got a couple Behemoths left. And Hammerheads. So suddenly I'm back to square one. Uh, all that was for nothing. Titan's out for Phoenix. He can use the Adaptive Armor and resist the EMP of the Enlightened. Hammerheads as well. I need to be very cautious about those. I've got the bikes on separate control groups so I can quickly uh, micro those in to deal with the hammerhead threat. Orca's out for Phoenix. He's got those just to detect stealth. And I built an engineer before uh, to claim the tip spike. I built more than one, but that's going to be really helpful in this fight because I was able to take back that husk. Phoenix not destroying that avatar husk with the dual laser. Orca's going in for this avatar but uh, the bike should be able to clean these up the hammerheads are also chasing it and look at this engineer just running through hell R running through all those hammerheads running through those titans orcas and somehow manages to claim me a behemoth shockwave artillery for phoenix but these are really fast infantry units i'm able to dodge the shockwave and i thought that was his behemoth because i couldn't believe that i was able to get there with an engineer but uh, yeah, the behemoth of mine was quickly dispatched. And yeah, this is very messy at this point. I've got these tip troopers to deal with these riflemen. There's a hammerhead back out again for him. I've got the bikes, which I can use to kill the hammerhead. He's trying to chase down these enlightened. I can't afford to lose any more of them. And that heroic bike is really a game changer at this point. You know, it's really difficult to contend with a heroic unit such as that, especially when well microed. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it, guys. That is the game. And I hope you all found that one to be a fun and exciting watch. Uh, could pass it on to Cybert and he can cast it. And I think it's probably worthwhile for him to cast this game because it did have a lot of action, a lot of strategies, especially with the Avatar Commander technology. There was no real laming going on. It was just pure tactics and strategy. That was a really rare game, in my opinion. Lots of action. Rig packed up and ready.
and I hope you all once again enjoyed it. So uh, I think I'm going to end it here, guys. I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. And before I leave, I would like to give a big thank you to all of my Patreons who have been supporting me and my YouTube channel. Uh, if it weren't for them, then I wouldn't have been able to do the 4K mod and the patch as well that motivated me throughout those projects. And if you would like to become a member, then I have links down below in the description. But besides that, guys, uh, I'm going to leave it here. So I hope you all enjoyed that. And this is going to be Master Leaf. Peace out.